Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast, the Sunday morning edition. Thank you guys for joining this morning. I hope you're having a beautiful day. We are in the temple this morning, the temple of self, by the way, not a real temple. This is just a picture. But if you don't know me, my name is Jacob Cooker, but my friends call me Cub, and you should too. The Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast is all about faith, spirituality, and the realm of the paranormal. Grab a cup of coffee, sit back, relax this morning. We're going to get into uh, the esoteric reading of the Gospel of John. We are moving right along through John right now, and we're in that very familiar part of John where we get into John 3.16. You know it. You love it. It's been interpreted, misinterpreted, reinterpreted, remembered, memorized, and cited for, well, a very long time, at least all of my life and uh, probably hundreds of years uh, since the canonization. Uh, So what the esoteric reading is, what's up, William, Mia, thank you for being here. What's up, Merle, how are you? Uh, Sun is out and shining, it's a good day, amen, Merle, amen. I'm going to get my coffee this morning. Um, I'm running late today, obviously. But I think today's a really important one. We've got kind of a short section to read, um, particularly with the red letters. But what I like to do with the esoteric reading is uh, get into the gospel in a way that uh, is not really being gotten into uh, in your churches or your normal Bible study groups. Um, If you know my channel, uh, again, Faith, Spirituality, Paranormal, um, I am what you would consider a Gnostic. I am what you would consider a Marcionite, meaning I believe the God of the Old Testament is a different God than the Father that Christ speaks of. Uh, so to start today, if you're new here and you're like, Hey, what's this guy all about? Um, rather than go, Oh no, I don't believe that stick around. I think, uh, I think you'll enjoy my content. I think you will enjoy a fresh perspective and whether you uh, agree to agree with me, uh, on every point or not, I think there's a lot of really good things that come out of the studies that we do here. That's what I love about the esoteric reading of the gospels. We started with John here, and we're just plugging away through it. Uh, esoteric means uh, underneath, hidden, secret. Um, and so it's the esoteric knowledge. And if you think about what Christ was doing, he was bringing esoteric knowledge, esoteric understanding, and gnosis. Gnosis is not knowledge, and it's not wisdom. It's the alchemy of both of them into a deep understanding of self, creation, God, uh, universal laws, um, your purpose and place within this ethos. Uh, what is up, Marie? How are you doing? Welcome. Um, so that's how I get into it. And I spin it from that angle, um, not from a theological angle. So if you're here for good theology, then you're in the wrong place. Uh, if you're here for like some deeper downloads and, and like a whole fresh perspective, uh, then you're definitely in the right place. So that that's what I do, um, and I love everyone. Everyone is welcome here. We have uh, atheist, agnostic. We have uh, Wicca. We have um, Hindu. We have uh, Muslim. We have Hebrew or Jewish. We have uh, Christians. We have all kinds of different uh, walks of life in here. So no matter what faith tradition, what walk of life, what orientation, I don't care who you're married to, where you do or don't go to church, what the color of your skin is. You're welcome here. And I really, I have to preface everything that I teach with that because I think it's a common mistake that's made amongst uh, spirituality, faith, that type of thing, uh, creators that, hey, you've got to do something my way. Hey, you've got to, you know, this is what this this holy book says and you've got to follow that way. And I'm not here to tell you that at all. I, and I really don't want to change anybody. I want to open your mind. Uh, your open mind will do more in your life than I can ever do by trying to convince you of anything. And that's all that I'm, I'm here to do. So, uh, I don't want you to change your lifestyle, your orientation, uh, your religion, nothing like that. Um, uh, because I think it's totally possible to continue to go with friends and family to your uh, religious institutions, to your churches, whatever, uh, if you do or do not go and still, 
uh, delve into what I'm talking about. Now, at a certain point, uh, you may decide that you're you're spiritually strong enough to kind of break off and maybe start your own group or do your own thing. And that's that's going to be a natural progression of that. So um, which is obviously what I'm doing here. So on a Sunday morning. So uh, it's not that I am. Uh, it's not an us versus them mentality. It is not. It's there's milk and there's meat. And we're here. We are chewing on the bone, chewing on the gristle here of these scriptures and of these concepts of a higher mind, spirituality, ascension, the message of the Christ. Now, before I start reading this, uh, Substance 777, what's up, my friend? How are you? Yes, open-mindedness is appreciated, brother. Yes, absolutely. Uh, who does it keep asking me to ask to join, or why does it keep asking me? I don't know. That's a Facebook thing, uh, Alexandria. I'm sorry about that. Uh, they they want people to like go live together the way they do on TikTok, but I've ran into more problems with that, with people just wanting to get on and try to prove me wrong or argue or something, and it doesn't create good content. So I normally keep that feature off on all the platforms um, unless we plan a collaboration like Josh and I are working on right now. Uh, and if you haven't caught the Wednesday nights with Josh uh, of uh, Sons of God Ministries, go check that out. Um, incredible series. My personality and his personality really are like this perfect yin and yang where uh, you get the mystic side with me and then you get like this uh, really like knowledgeable side with him and I think there's something really beautiful about it so go check that out it's on my YouTube channel so but we're gonna get in here we're in uh verse 13 um in chapter 3 of the gospel of John and to preface this I am a believer in the universal Christ I believe that Christ wasn't just for one timeline one people I believe it is an esoteric representation of the world of salvation for all universal salvation through the Christ energy, through the Christ consciousness, through the path and the way that he laid out through that part of self that is him. Um, as we see in the book of Enoch, every part of creation has a spirit attached to it. Uh, how much more even than you who are animated, who are aware, who are connected to a divine intelligence yet we always act out of our lower flesh. Um, and, and we see that in the Old Testament, like the old law is, is made to, uh, to entrap that flesh, us made in flesh. Um, and what Christ spoke was, it's the uh, bhakti yoga, the yoga of love. It's yoking yourself to the frequency of love. Uh, this is an important one, John 3. Yeah, absolutely, Steve. This is a really good one this morning. And what I'm going to share with you guys about John 3.16, um, I'm not here to change anyone's opinion on John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I've got it memorized. You've got it memorized. Um, what's up, Patrick? How are you, my friend? Um, yeah, you got to get this one right. That's what's up, man. Uh, so common interpretation of that. You know, you've got to know Jesus, right? Like, that's the common interpretation. If that's what you believe, I'm not here to, like, shake that or even change it. I just want to give you, like, let's flip the coin over and look at the other side of that. Let's look at what is underneath the esoteric side of that coin. And what I'm going to reveal this morning is absolutely going to change anyone with an open mind. It will change your relationship to the Christ, okay? Okay. Not to Jesus, not to a, uh, a figure, a religious figure, or uh, an icon uh, of a Savior, but your relationship to the Christ within you. Okay, let me say that again. Your relationship to the Christ within you. Why did I put this temple behind me? Because Christ said, you are the temple. You are the temple of God. He said, you'll do greater things than even I have done. He said, the kingdom of God is within you. In the Gnostic Gospel of Thomas, he says, if you bring forth that which is within you, it will save you. If you do not bring it forth, it will condemn you. Okay, so like, wow, what does that mean? It means that you have this divine place within you. You have this seed of the kingdom within you. And if you bring it forth, then it will envelop your life and those around you and you will become 
that save your energy yourself. I'm not saying you're going to be Jesus. That's not what I'm saying here. But I'm saying you will now have that power, that kingdom welling forth within your life, overflowing. Your life will be ignited with this golden fire. That's why I put a burning heart on today's uh, because that's what this verse, I believe, is about esoterically. And when you let it ignite your life like this, it's going to change you for sure. And it may change you to the point where you rethink your conventional understandings of the scriptures and, and of what Jesus said. That's why what I get into here, we're not really reading through any of the Pauline doctrines. Um, we are uh, we're really looking at um, these doctrines that are the words of Christ, like the red letters. I don't believe that the red letters were changed. I believe, you know, if you just look into the canonization process, everything in the Bible has been, you know, it's this whole, it's a collage of different mythologies, different ties together. And I'm not saying it's not true. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying who among us can actually just sit down and read the Bible and go, yeah, I get it. Like this makes a logical sense together because it doesn't. And 99.9% .9 of the time, that's what we try to do within our institutions is try to make it make sense together rather than let's flip it over. What's the esoteric understanding? Let's internalize it. Let's make it something living within self, something that's not judging. It's not a religious law to hold a judge against, but rather it's an understanding that Christ came against that very thing, that very thing. That's what he came against. If you don't lose it, you, uh, you use it, you lose it. Absolutely. Many names, one source, Christ. Absolutely. Collage. Love uh, the wording. Absolutely. Substance. Absolutely. Um, so here we go. I'm trying to get my coffee because, oh man, I'm, it's, it's a long morning already. So I'm going to back up into verse 10. Jesus answered him, you are a teacher of Israel and you don't understand these things. Most certainly I tell you, we speak that which we know and testify of that which we have seen, and you don't receive our witness. Now, how many times have I told you guys something similar to that on here? I'm teaching what I'm experiencing. I don't know this. This is not like I don't sit here and I'm like a scholar on this stuff. I teach because I'm experiencing it. I've seen it. I've experienced it. I know it, okay? Are you wearing pants? Yeah, they're uh, flesh-colored, though, so... Uh, and they go away with the green screen. So, yeah, I promise I'm wearing pants. Um, these are like my khaki hiking pants. So, But good. Thanks for noticing. Um, let's see. Um, so, so think about what he's really saying here. He's saying, like, you know these things, but we experience these things. We're speaking that which we experience. I'm speaking that, as he's saying, because I come from the Father. And that's, as I, if I don't rip my microphone out there. Uh, nothing else matters if you don't get this right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So moving on. If I told you earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe it if I tell you heavenly things? You got to understand what they're looking for in this time. They're looking for a Messiah. They're looking for a heavenly kingdom, which is within all of their prophecies. He is trying, desperately trying to tell them the kingdom does not come with visible signs. The kingdom is within you. You will do greater things than even I have done. He is using their religious law against them, not as a, you know, an affront, like a war based against, not an us versus them, but as an against them of, like he's going to keep playing cards that just, you know, I don't want to say the word, uh, that top their cards. We used to be able to say you would have a card, but you can't say that now because of former presidents. So, uh, cause these algorithms get all nutty if you even say that word. Um, so he's, he's playing cards that top their cards all the time. Every one of them. And we commonly too, especially what you hear from the pulpit is like, oh, he, he mentioned that verse in Isaiah, so he's corroborating it. No, 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 no. He's, he's, con he's contrasting. He's flipping the card over. He's flipping the coin over. He's showing that other side, the esoteric representation of a religious law. Like, how do you fulfill that spiritually? 
You're trying to fulfill it in the flesh with all these laws, with all the sacrifices. By the way, your God is Satan, is what he said. I hope Facebook is live. So, lost connection. Try switching between Wi-Fi. Yeah, I have no 5G in my neighborhood. So, okay. Now we're back. Now we're back on TikTok. I don't know if my internet reset or TikTok reset, but it looked like Facebook was still going. So, my apologies about that. But what, I, what I'm trying to get out here is like, I'm not coming against anybody's religious tradition here. I don't care. I mean, keep practicing your religion. I don't care. What I'm giving you can be applied to anything, okay? That's why I teach. I don't even come here claiming to be a Christian channel. I am a universal spiritual channel, okay? And I'm trying to understand all of this stuff. We, we read uh, the Bhagavad Gita here. We read, I've got the Tibetan Book of the Dead over here. Um, I read the Bible a lot. Now, I come from a, a, a long tradition of Christianity, and that's kind of where my heart is rooted. So I believe Christ is the fulfillment of all of that. And again, in a universal manner, not as a, you got to join our church or you need to do this. If you don't believe this literally, then you're going to, that's not what I believe. Somebody asked, what do you think of hell? Um, you know, I think it's a construct built to scare people. Christ spoke of Gehenna. Okay, Gehenna was a different place. It was it was a literal place, like a pit that they were talking about. Um, Gehenna is a whole different thing. It's like an underworld, okay? And we don't even understand what that is. By the way, when Christ is talking about here in a second, he's going to talk about eternal life here, and we don't even understand what that means because we have this understanding like they were trying to understand back then that that something's going to take them out of this life, glorify them. They're going to live on a cloud. They're going to live in a, uh, an eternal heavenly kingdom rather than an esoteric kingdom of rebirth and renewal and cycles through reincarnation, through ascension, and through finally unity with the divine fractal mind of God as a fully glorified being sitting at the feet of Christ because the Christ energy has taken over our lives, not the religi religiosity or churchianity. Uh, we are explaining downloads we get from praying and studying and talk to God. Yeah, absolutely, Don Star. Absolutely. Uh, you know, downloads are, are real, guys. Like, you can, uh, you know, Merle is in our Mythos community, by the way. If you haven't heard of the Mythos community and you love what I'm doing, it's on my website at www.cubcooker.com, and it's nine bucks a month. It's like a, you can become a patron and support what I'm doing here. Um, I tried to keep it super affordable. We've got a private group with that. We have private live stream calls in there where we get to talk back and forth amongst the community. I do BTS videos, behind the scenes videos in there. Lots of really cool perks in there. We've got badges for the community that like you know, the people that are really active in there. So if you just want to go deeper with what I'm doing, that's a perfect way to really support what I'm doing. We've got all these ad platforms like YouTube's running ads now. Uh, I got accepted into their monetization program, but the the amount of money versus the amount of ads that go on the channel, is just so distracting. And so I really, really want to try to turn ads off as much as I can. And the more people we have support me on that level, the better. Um, uh, that, that I cannot have to deal with all the, the ads showing because I really want this message to get out to people. So, uh, what's up, Zach? How are you, my brother, my brother? Um, thank you for being here. Um, and then Merle, yeah, Merle, uh, has been doing like the meditations and stuff. I hope I can share this Merle, but, um, you know, talking about sunlight downloads. Okay. It's coming through light codes. Like we don't even understand this. Like light holds intelligence. Okay. Water holds intelligence. Why do you think baptism is so important? You know, these downloads talking about praying and getting a download, uh, when you're out in the sun, you're in natural elements, you're, you're in your heart chakra, you're praying, you're meditating, you're speaking with source, um, whether you want to call him God, source, universe, intelligence, whatever. Um, man, and it's so, it's, it's wild guys. You can just like, you can feel it moving through your being and just activating something in you. Uh, new earth dragons actually introduced me to the light codes and stuff. But, um, anyway, I'm getting off track as I normally do. No one is ascended into heaven, but who descended out of heaven, the son of man who is in heaven. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Okay, so the common interpretation of that is that he's going to be lifted up on the cross, right? 
But if you think about what he's doing there too, he's tying himself to the serpent in the garden, the serpent that like the, the old mosaic law is coming against, you know, they're lifting up the serpent. Um, think about that. It's always been enmity between the serpent and especially the old law and Christ already right there is tying himself to, he's going to be lifted up. Now that could even be in the resurrection. Uh, it, it literally depends on like, you're going to experience the reality of how you interpret these documents, by the way. Um, because how you interpret these documents, how you interpret scripture is going to dictate how your life is lived. Let me say that again, how you interpret spiritual texts, be it the Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, uh, the Upanishads, the Tibetan book of the dead, uh, the Emerald tablets. I don't care what it is. Any spiritual ancient text. These are all mystic texts from a time lost from the cradles of civilization for us to try to understand our divine place in this cosmos. K-O-S-M-O-S, cosmos. The Greek word for cosmos is the construct of creation. How you interpret them. If you interpret this literally, Jesus, as a literal person, you're going to experience the good, the bad, and the ugly from that interpretation. If you interpret it, Jesus as the Christ, as an energy, as an entity, that this is a story that's timeless, it's internal, it's happening through the ethos all the time, that he's been here since the beginning of time, he's always breaking through to share truth with his flock and awaken those in him, that's going to give that's going to give you a different life. You're going to have problems with that too. You're going to have the good, the bad, and the ugly with that. So I'm not telling you how to interpret this. I'm giving you my interpretation, and I want you to know that you can interpret it, okay? You can, and your interpretation will affect, A-F-F-E-C-T, affect. It's going to have an outward force into your life to program and build your mythos. Your mythos is a set of agreements, okay? It's an agreement about a thing or a set of stories that you agree to. That's why our mythos community is called mythos community because it's about all of us developing our personal mythos it's not that we're all like yeah we all agree on one thing and um we're you know we're like this little weird little community no it's like everybody has a different opinion in there but we love each other and we're committed to helping each other develop our mythos even deeper so that we can live better lives bless more people and bear the light in the world Everybody's worried about the light bearer, the Lucifer. What if Christ is the Lucifer? What if he's bearing light against the old gods, the old Mosaic law, the old ways? By the way, any old old religious law or system or new one that is taking the keys to the kingdom, holding them hostage, and keeping people from going through the door. And by the way, the leaders of that won't go through the door themselves. Sound familiar? I'll just let you chew on that for a second. Uh, Fleer, what's up? How are you? Really want to join Mythos, but I always miss your streams. Hey, uh, you don't have to miss. You don't have to be on for the streams. Um, Mythos streams are at random times. You can go back and watch them, and then I'm a lot easier to see your comments in there too, and talk back and forth. So. Um, even if you miss these streams, also all of these streams are reposted automatically into the mythos group. So you've got one place you can go and make sure you don't miss these. If there's a subject you like, you can go back and grab them. It's just a really convenient place. So, uh, even if you miss these streams, you can just jump over to my website right now and grab it. Um, you don't have to wait or worry about, you know, missing them. So I think you'll really enjoy it, but, um, feels like I won't be able to be a part of the community the way I want to be though. Part of what the mythos thing is about, by the way, let me just disclaim this. It's not just that I'm giving you something in that. It's that you're giving me something. So if you love what I'm doing and you want to support it, by stepping out on support, you're putting your heart out there. And we've had a lot of people in that community, I think, where just by supporting what I'm doing, it's activated like a deeper level of all of this. And I'm not saying like you have to pay me for knowledge. That's not it. It's just... We know that like when we step out and and we take action in that, that it does activate something and it might actually yoke you a bit stronger to what we're doing so that you feel more connected. Uh, And you can cancel any time if you don't like it or you don't feel like uh, you're vibing with my message or you don't have time for it or whatever. But 
Um, I think, you know, you might consider it because it is a it is a relationship there. It's not just a, you're buying a service from me or uh, I'm giving you something. It's it's a back and forth. It, it really is a patron supporter community there. So um, and that's what, you know, as we get into this message here, you know, you see that that's very similar to Christ's message. He's he's talking about this exchange with the divine rather than. Um, a process that you have to follow, a a set of doctrines or dogmas. And I think that that's really important. Um, so he's saying, if I told you earthly things, you know, like basically you didn't understand some of the most basic earthly things that I'm telling you. And if I told you like the real secrets of creation, the real secrets of the cosmos, the real secrets of heaven, you wouldn't even be able to take them in. Like you'd probably just implode, you know, um, as Moses lifted up the serpent. So you guys interpret that however you want. Whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. What does that mean? Let's look. We're going to jump over to Bible Hub. And look at the Greek. The Greek of John 3.16 is going to change your game when it comes to this. For God, Theos. Okay, Theos is a very specific name for God. Okay, not referring to... Because you got to remember, Christ was in the time. Yahweh was very known. He would have said that. He would have been very clear about that. Every time he describes his father, those characteristics are in direct, stark contrast to the Yahweh of the Old Testament. So, you know, don't, I'm just the messenger. You go look it up yourself. I've got dozens and dozens of verses that prove that. Joshua, who I'm collaborating with on Wednesday nights, has hundreds that he's already documented. Hundreds. Uh, Substance says, I appreciate your un your understanding. Thank you very much. Yes, all my deets are in my profile. Um, you guys know where to go. Um, we can't say the the hmm and hmm anymore because if I even say those words, it flags it on these. Like it's it's ridiculous. These platforms want you to create and be successful, but only if you go through there, you know. And, and so you, you got to be careful with what you say as far as where your info is. Uh, but you guys know where to find my info anywhere. If you go into my profile information in there, you can find all my links, but it's cubcooker.com, just my name.com. Um, and, and that, that should be easy to find. So for God, so love the world. What does love to mean here? Agapa saying now, not a G A P this is E G A P E. S-E-N, Agapasean, to love, to wish well, to take pleasure in, long for, denotes the love of reason, esteem, perhaps from again to love. From again to love. And that's Strong's 25. To love, to wish, God loved, wished well, took pleasure in, had esteem for the world. That doesn't sound like uh, Yahweh descending in fire and smoke, judging, jealous, 2.5 million unalivings in the Old Testament. Some people estimate like 25 million. I can't tell you what to believe, but I can tell you, think about it. You have a mind, you have a brain, you have a heart. What is it telling you? Um, for he so, he so loved the world. What is the world? Probably from the base, ca, uh, camizo, orderly arrangement, decoration, or the world. So he loved the orderly arrangement. It's not saying necessarily the flesh world here. It's not saying the physical construct or the matrix. But he loves the order behind it. The spirits behind it. The unity behind it. How all things work together behind it. Because we know as we get into Revelation that as creation is stripped away, 
all that's left is life, light, and truth. There's nothing to mask anymore. And he gave his own, his one and only. And so Strong's 34, 39, one and only. says only, only begotten or unique. It also means only born. And I like this unique because we know that from all of the mythologies that Theos, the Godhead, the father, the mother, the son, has a lot of kids. If you look at El, El Elyon, the Canaanite pantheon, El had 70 children. One of which is Yahweh, one of which is Baal. Asherah was his consort or his wife. That's your divine father, your divine mother. They have a son, an only begotten son, which means unique. So they have all of these other little g gods or what we would consider the angels or archangels perhaps. I don't understand all the hierarchies. I'm just giving you the mythology. It gets you to understand, open your mind to this. So what does only begotten mean? Is he literally the only, or is he the only flesh born? Or is it maybe the unique quality of the only begotten, the unique quality, the only born? If you actually click into that word, the very last description of it is the word unique. Monogenus is the transliteration of this word. Monogenus. You guys know what that means. Singular genetics. Unique. Pure. The only of its kind. Let that sink in. Because when you have a big mytholo mythological understanding and, and more of a mystical outlook on all of these concepts, all of these concepts, mystic me, good deal. Uh, sorry, I just saw your comment. Thank you. Um, Imagine that we are God and things in that book are just a description of the human path towards enlightenment. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a beautiful esoteric representation of exactly what I'm talking about here. Did this literally happen? Sure. Great. But it's not, I don't see it here. I don't see Jesus standing here in front of me, but I know he's within me. I know the Christ energy I know that this whole story has been happening in me. Like literally everything you see in the gospel happens within self. You are born. You're, you're in this perfect prison in your mother's womb. You have everything you need. Then you become aware and you're kicked out of the garden. And now you have to toil. You know where the place of life is, but now you're in the world what is the serpent the activation of your genetics your dna your divinity the gnosis that you're not just within your mother you're not just within this garden you're now going into the world as a bearer of light and then you forget about it somewhere around seven days old i think they say you forget that you're divine because you got to start struggling. You got to survive. You move into the flesh, the carnal instincts of man. Yeah, I've got the Bible code on my list. Uh thank you for your uh your recommendation. Yeah, I've heard that's really good. Also, um Paradigm by Jonathan Cain and Return of the Gods by Jonathan Cain will blow your mind. Uh, especially as far as how all of this stuff works, like the gods still interacting with humanity, still avataring people. Um, pretty crazy stuff, but pretty cool. 
especially if you have an open mind. Now you're in the world. And by the way, God sent his unique quality within you that if you believe in that quality, you should not perish, but you can be born again. You can have everlasting life. And what are, we're going to look at that. What does that mean? Shall not perish. To destroy fully, literally, or figuratively. That's what perish means. We think about perish as being thrown into hell. Think about the idea that we know in physics energy cannot be created or destroyed, but we also know that God is outside of those laws, outside of those elements, and he can do whatever he wants with that. And what if your energy could cease to be reincarnated? Why, why am I stuck on the reincarnation? Because it makes a heck of a lot more sense than the thing that we've been sold by the modern churchianity system. And if you look at the message of Christ, you see that in it because we know that he went on to India, Nepal. He learned from all these mystery schools he understood these deep esoteric knowledge of self. And he taught it, okay? Even, even the line that he says, eyes to see and ears to hear, is like a direct correlation with the mystery schools. Whether they used it first or he used it first, I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's, and then don't throw pearls to swine. That's one of the core elements and understandings of these, like the Kabbalion mystery teachings is like it's for people who are open-minded it's for people who are awake it's for people who are aware it's for people who have already activated that light within them they've already said yes to the christ within okay not the christian christ but the christ the eternal the living the unity the universal christ the cosmic christ do you think that if you live in fear you live in hell absolutely absolutely it's all frequencies guys it's all energies Whatever energy and frequency you yoke yourself to, you're yoking yourself to a spirit. Christ taught the bhakti yoga of frequency you yoke yourself to, you're yoking yourself to a spirit. Christ taught the bhakti yoga of love. And how do you yoke yourself? That's what yoga means, yoke. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That word he used, yoke, in the ancient understandings of yoga. There's some pastors now saying that yoga is like this new thing that was invented in the 60s. Now, the yoga practices we have now in the West, for sure they were. But yoga is a like tens of thousands of years old. This is like the, the spiritual practices that Christ understood. How do you think he went into the desert 40 days and 40 nights? He fasted, he prayed, he meditated. Like, I mean, come on, you guys think he was just sitting there like camping, you know, just like waiting for God? Like, no, he was connected, okay, connected. I have a feeling that Jesus returned already within the uh, man named. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think he's returned in a lot of different people. Okay. I think that he's had many avatars. That's where we, we take this literally that it was his only begotten. It was this one timeline. Now, I think it's that unique quality, the only begotten, the set apart spirit of the Christ that is returned into humanity over and over and over and over. By the way, he can wake up in you and he can wake up in me if we if we allow it and if we're called to it exactly how do we even know uh he was even real you know like that's i mean that's the thing like there's you got some archaeologists that say oh absolutely was we have evidence you got some that say yeah there's not a lot of evidence for this jesus in this timeline there's even more evidence for a jesus in another timeline or an isus uh or isa isu is was actually um more what he would be called. We've been told Yeshua because that's what the Hebrew interpretation of it is. But that's not necessarily what the person that lived would have been called. There's also a whole theory that seems to hold some weight. I can't confirm or deny it, but that he was out of Egypt, just as Yahweh was a god out of Egypt, that Christ actually was the son of Cleopatra. And that he was taken and adopted by Mary and Joseph. And that Joseph of Arimathea was actually his uncle. And he took him to India and Nepal because he was teaching in the synagogues and really aggravating these religious leaders. And they took him, took him away. He you know, Joseph, his uncle, took him to 
to go learn more so that he wasn't like like hey there's a place where they'll they'll accept you there's a place where they'll you know teach you more where you can really awaken uh chris yeah good point you know like uh historians historians like josephus uh most secular historians agree um let's see i've thought so uh too when i read about him like elijah and elisha yeah absolutely absolutely so again if it didn't happen literally it still has relevance and that's why i love what i do here because this esoteric understanding i don't care if they prove that he never walked the earth he still has walked the flesh the earth the clay within me because I've experienced it and I speak of things which I've experienced. And that's the whole message today. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm working on finding these coffee cups. This is a really high-end brand. I don't know where we got it. It's made in Thailand and it's it's like the best coffee cup I have. I love, love, love this one. But I'm looking for if I can find this coffee mug and get it on my shop. Because I've got a t-shirt shop if you guys don't know about it. And I want to add some mugs for Christmas but I'm looking for this design of mug so I can put my artwork over it. I love it. Love it. Love it. It's like the best. You can fit like half a pot of coffee in it. It's it's perfect. Um, I want to read the word eternal life here. So let's look at life first. Strong's 2222. Two, two, two. Okay. You guys know I like the numbers. 2222. 22 is my favorite number. 2222. 22. What is life? Zoen. Z-O-E-N. Zoen is the Greek life, both of physical present and of spiritual, particularly future existence from Zao, meaning life. It's literally the life force. It's that that perpetuality. Now, look at what eternal means here. Because that's present and future. But what is the now? What is the eternal? The word is A-I-O-N-I-O-N, anon. So think about an aeon, like an eon, anon. Strong's 166 means perpetual. That's eternal life, okay? We think of eternal life as like we die, we go to heaven, now we're going to live with God forever there. Rather than we get to create infinitely over and over and over, we get to experience all forms of this cosmos, all places we even think about reincarnation. Why does it have to be on this planet? And I know that gets that gets out there, but we, we see all these other stuff in the cosmos. What if we get to go experience more lives, more uh, experiences, more bodies, more glorifications, more? We go from glory to glory, it says, and we just like to think about that. That's from check to check. You're just living paycheck to paycheck with the glory to glory mentality. What if that literally means that you get to recycle over and over? You get to perpetuality in your your eternal life force your eternal zao i'm just saying uh chris if you do want to collaborate with me um i've got a few standards on how i do that just to make sure that i serve the audience correctly um, i'm collaborating with joshua right now i'm taking applications for collaborations into next year so um, i've got some on the plate but I try to plan those so we can serve both of our audiences correctly. Um, but I'm, I would love to go live with you, absolutely. But uh, I, like I said, I like to just have a little bit of a little bit of a plan, kind of a heads up, and make sure that we're both on the same wavelength. Um, the reason I say that is I've had a lot of bad experiences with people trying to come on and just uh, you know say that they're going to be cool, and then they're they're really there to like prove their method to my audience. And that's just not what I'm about. I'm not even trying to prove my method to my audience. Uh, I'm just here to serve. So that's, that's really what I'm doing. But, um, I do not want to recycle on this planet. Absolutely. I don't blame you. I don't blame you mystic me. Uh, and I think that's really important. Let's see, Scott, when did God become eternal? He's always been the everlasting present moment. Amen, brother. Amen. Absolutely. Um, you know, this whole concept, the Eastern mystic concept of be here now, like the present moment, that's where heaven is. Absolutely. I'm telling you from my meditation, I'm learning how to even do that. Like when I'm driving and just be present, like, I mean, you're still focused on the road. I'm not saying that, but like, 
these these yogas and stuff that I'm practicing, like it's not just it's not something that you you have to be in a quiet room practicing. It's like you learn to do this and you learn to be that presence for others and to be calm, collected, focused, wise, loving. Like you're in this it's a different frequency. Um Tina, great, great point. I need to learn good meditation. Last night on my website, I updated a bunch of stuff. I put uh, a brand new program that I'm working on, and I'm, this is a perfect segue. I'm doing light work meditation, and I want to explain what that means. I have the pre-sale on there, okay? So if you go to it and buy right now, there is no content in that course, but there will be very, very soon. So if you pre-buy it, you're going to get it at the price. It's $99 right now. It will be, once the content is in there, it will be $300 and it will be worth every single penny, okay? This course that I'm doing is not for newbies. It is not for the faint of heart. It is light work and it is shadow work, okay? I don't do shadow work, but as I was building this light work course and working on this concept, it is a series of meditations. I'm going to do them with you. They're live sessions, not like I'm actually live with you, but I, I do them on the fly. Like I'm spinning, I'm, I'm just, I'm downloading, I'm channeling, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to be doing music with it. So I'll have my iPad doing the music, um, performing the music and doing the meditation with you, taking you on mindscapes and working through blocks in your own life. How do I know what your blocks are? Because they're the same ones that I have. Okay. The same ones that I have. Uh, what an amazing time in your life right now. I applaud you. Thank you, Mystic Me. I really appreciate that. It is. It is. I love I love what I'm doing, guys. I'm so thankful that I get to do this. Thank you for your support. It's called the Pro to Po Lightwork Sessions Program. It's on my website right now. It's got beautiful artwork behind it. Uh, the artwork that's going to be attached to it is beautiful as well. The music is beautiful. I write, perform narrate the whole thing each session again is performed on the fly pre-recorded they're going to go in there and they're it's just going to work with you you know and you can download the sessions i'm making them downloadable so you're going to pay one time and as i add new ones to it you can go download uh, there'll be a series one and then i'll have another series come out the first series will be um themed you know around the protopo um as I add more series and chapters to that, um, you'll have access to those, which is going to be really, really cool. So uh, go check it out. I think you're going to love it. Um, but it, it's it's the, the concept is wild. And just what I've been playing with is it's going to be very, very good for people that are ready to like dig in. Again, that's why I say it's not it's not like the Mythos community. The Mythos community is like it's just our day-to-day. -day. We communicate. We've got live streams in there. Um, you know, you can even get on the, the live phone call live streams with me in the mythos community. The protopo program is like, the reason I'm making it a little more expensive is, um, it is a one-time payment, but it's going to be like, it's an investment in self because I'm putting my, my best foot forward in there. My deepest, deepest like abilities to just pour out. And it's not for people that just want something free. And that's why I'm charging for it because, it, it it takes a lot out of me. Like it's just, it, it's the work. It's the spiritual work I've been talking about. So, and, and I, and that's probably all I'm going to say about it, even in the pitch for it, because if you get it and you're there and you're on that wavelength and you want something like that in your life, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. You don't need to know the mode and the mechanism that I'm using, um, or, or even experience a session in there to know that, yeah, you vibe with it and it's time. So, that's what that's for, but um, I've simplified the website. The t-shirts are on sale now. I only say that because Christmas, if you want a t-shirt, get it ordered. It's, oh man, it, you might get it by Christmas. You might, they're, they're two to three weeks out on shipping, I know. So um, if you want them, there is free shipping right now, so you can go check that out. But let me wrap this before I run. I'm going to go meet my family for lunch today. Just think about eternal life here. Think about eternal life and begotten. What is the begotten one within you? 
and what is eternal life to you because it's not life like you think of it here but think of the life here like all the trials you go through all the pain all the pleasure everything you experience is a learning opportunity Mystic Me, uh, great comment and prayers for you, my friend, in your healing journey. I want you guys to know I love you deeply. And I don't just do this because I like to see my face on camera. I do this because I love each and every one of you. I love what I do here. I love to reveal these deep understandings of what God is trying to tell us through all of these spiritual texts about who we are and who he is to us. Uh, Micah, it's over on the website. You can go check it out. I don't want to pitch anymore. I hate pitching uh, products to people, but you can go check it out over there. It's got some more information on it. I do this because I love you guys. It takes a lot out of me. It, it's, you know, I, I've tried to get in this place where I flow on it. And even with the light work sessions that I'm doing, we're going to do them in the dark or at least in the mood lighting with the, the blues and the reds and the yellows in the background, just the, the hues of colors. We're going to meditate on the mind of God. We're going to meditate on self. Protopo in Greek means pattern. And once you recognize the patterns of God, go study just a, a little bit of quantum physics. Go study a little bit of biology. Go study a little bit of life sciences. Go study a little bit of archaeology. Go study a little bit of geology. Because that protopo, that pattern, is in everything. It says, since the beginning of creation, my unseen qualities have been seen in all things which are visible, so they have no excuse for not knowing me. Somebody asked about the second coming of Christ. I, I, I claim and I believe that I was raptured in 2020. 2021, somewhere in there. I was caught up in Christ already in my higher chakras. Felt like I'd stepped out of one world into another. For sure I am now. For sure. It doesn't make me perfect. I've had... A whole boatload of life of mistakes, triumphs, sins, glories, everything you can think of. And it's all a chance to learn and ascend. And that's where most people get it wrong. The idea of repenting isn't just, I feel guilty about what I've done or who I've been or the things that have happened to me or whatever, or the, all the traumas. Repenting is healing of the traumas, healing of crappy decisions we've made ourselves, crappy decisions other people have made towards us, friendships that aren't around anymore, people we thought would be there for us, people that thought we would be there for them, by the way. That's what that repentance is. Some people say it's turning around on a path. I say it's stepping into another level of the pattern, the protopo, the frequency, the divine fractal mind of God. It's an ascension process. You decide that you don't agree with that frequency in your life and you're going to find a new one. You're going to step into a new one. And for most of us, you don't go from 3D to 5D or whatever you want to call it. You're taking steps and you're stepping into a deeper more beautiful part of that pattern of God from the base reality that we all think we know and the base interpretation of all these scriptures that we all think we know, trying to somehow live a good, happy life in the middle of all this insane chaos. But when you actually see, recognize, and embody the pattern of the mind of God, that's when you truly do the will of God. Because all things work together for his good and for the good of those who love him. Uh, Micah, yes, the Book of Enoch is on my website as well. You can grab it over there. Uh, the one that I particularly like. There's a bunch of different translations, but I have the Books of Enoch over there on my Amazon. And it has a bunch of different, it's like the full collection in that one. And that's the one I read from on here. So 
By the way, if you want to learn more about Enoch, I'm doing a series called The Keys of Enoch every day at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time on my channel. I'll be live tomorrow afternoon, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. I love you guys. I hope you have an awesome day. I'm going to go meet my family. Have a beautiful Sunday. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being here. Just taking time out of your day to open your mind. Those of you, I know some of you have already jumped over to the website. Thank you. Thank you for the support. Welcome to our new Mythos members. I know we already have uh, a couple out of this group, so thank you guys. Looking forward to talking with you more over there. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much. You guys be beautiful, be peace, be love, and find the Christ within. Find the Christ within. Within the history of your own self. The universe emits from you. Don't forget that. I love you guys. Peace.